Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Kermit Trent and it's Mini Monday Madness and we're painting uh, mini landscaped spring floral trees because you know what? Puxy Tiny Phil said six more weeks of spring so why not? So let's get started. Okay, so I'll go over some of my su supplies. I have my two pieces of three inch by three inch square. Um, I'm using 100% cotton arches paper. I have my palette here with my colors mixed up. I have pinks, rose in here. I have medium yellow, a bright green. I have a cobalt mixed with some indigo. I've got my water. I've got my paper towel over here underneath the paints. So um, you can use big brushes, little brushes for this. I'm going to be using um, some big and small. This is so tiny that, you know, you're going to have to work with a big brush and a small brush. So for the first one, let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to wash it with some water. Just going to wash across this the half like half of the pa half of the piece of paper and up with water. And then I'm going to take some of my cobalt paint. and then wash some of that in on the top and in on the bottom. So I'm moving it around. Move some of that around. I'm going to actually grab some, a little bit of purple dioxide. Just a teeny bit. Very loosely watered. Throw in a little bit here. Move that up. This is still fairly wet. I'm going to grab a darker, mix some of the cobalt with some ultramarine. Dab it on my paper towel. I'm just going to hit the bottom of this. Just tap it. Lightly, and then up in here. Like so. Just tapping that. Okay. This area, I'll clean my brush off. I'm going to grab some of this some out. bright green that I've got here. It's a medium green. Mixing that up. I'll add a little touch of burnt umber in it just to dull it down just a tad so it's not too bright. And we're going to go grab some of this. Place this across. Try not to touch the blue that we put down. And then we're going to go over here. Like so. And then we're going to grab some hooker's green. Mix a little burnt umber. Just gonna grab it on the bottom. Let that bleed up a little bit. Put some more umber in there so it's darker. Clean up my brush. I'm gonna grab more of the concentrated of that medium green and mix it in like so. Just gonna dab it in here up top. And clean my brush off. In this section, I kind of want to make it like a little pond. So I'm going to grab that cobalt. I'm just going to, I'm not going to hit the green. I'm just going to go in and lightly fill in this area. If 
bleeds, you can just take your brush and constantly like swipe it like a mop. All right, this stage, I am going to dry it with the hairdryer and come back. Actually, before I do the hairdryer, I'm, I'm adding a little darker blue mixed with some of that purple. I'm just going to get that line in the bottom just a little deeper. See, I'm pushing that. Just a brighter purple. Putting some lines down like you can see, like trees. And it will bleed out, kind of like a tree, zigzag across. And there you go. Okay, then I'm going to dry it. Okay, I've dried it enough that I'm going to add more green now. Back in. As you see here, a little darker towards the back. I added some burnt umber, but now I'm going to make it add more hookers green, and then the bottom here, and the back. And I add a little yellow. Just dab this in here a little bit. This is still gonna leave that white at the bottom. So now we're gonna take a very small brush. I have my Grumbacker number two, and we're gonna draw a tree with this. Uh, I'm going to get some burnt, some burnt umber on there. I can mix it with a little black, but just for now, I'll just do burnt umber. And I'll get it loose, as you see here. Just consistency. And I'm going to draw that cherry tree. It's bleeding a little bit over here because the green is wet, but that's okay. We can fix that. tree right in there. And like I said, since it's bleeding a little bit, I'll just wipe up some of that with my brush. That's fine. Now we have this pretty rose paint over here that we've mixed up. I'm going to grab a bigger brush. It's more rounded. Um, I have this Winsor Newton Cotman round brush, number eight. Grab some of this rose paint. Can I get it fairly loose? No, and dab it on my paper towel. And we're just going to go in and dab. We're just dabbing in the pretty, washing in this color, pretty cherry tree. Yeah, I'm just dabbing that. It's fairly loose. Getting a little pointy on the outward edges like that. You see that? And dabbing it all the way up to the top. Kind of want to make it look like it's leaning to the left. Then you can go in and grab some of the 
concentrated rows. Put some of that in there. Just dabbing it on top. If a shadow's below, I'm going to grab some either purple dioxide. If you don't have purple dioxide, ultramarine and rose would make a great purple. And I'll show you. Take the ultramarine here. Clean up your brush. Grab some of the rose. And you get a fairly decent purple. And you can use that for the under shadows here. If you don't have a purple color. But I have purple color, so. I'm going to mix the purple with a little of that rose. Like a fuchsia. Just for the undershadow part. Just dabbing, like you see here. See, I'm just dabbing. If it's looking a little too purpley, go back in with your brush, wipe it up. Go back in and add some of that pretty rose. You can see I'm just wiping it up with the brush. Now here's the little lake. Going to zoom in. Kind of grab some of that cobalt blue. Dab it on my paper towel. Just filling in more blue. So you can see that it's a pretty little pond to these little dashed lines. More blue towards the green part and more white where towards the front. And actually I'm going to grab some ultramarine and just dab it in really lightly in the back part. And over here on the side. And then I'm going to add in some pink. So it's a shadow of the tree. And then under the tree area, we can put in a couple little fallen petals. Down in this area, you can add in some more greenery, a little concentrated. Just brighten it up a little bit. Make it more lush. And I will take the green and make a little shadow here. The brown. Looking a little too brown, so I'm going to put some green in there. Go back to the tree, darken that up a bit. On that one side where the shadow is, because the sun's coming this way. And then you can add some yellow over here to brighten that section up a bit. And then take some green and go back over in here. And then go back up to the tree. Go add some deeper pink or roses, little smaller dots. This is more of an abstract type of tree. Again, just keep playing with, you know, if you want to add some darker elements back here. See how bright you want to get it, how dark you want to get it. You could add some color over in here. 
I would take more of a concentrated form of the red and just dab it if you want to have little like flowers coming up. And then I would take a concentrated form of like hooker's green with some brown, make little stems. It's still wet on wet right now, so it's gonna bleed a little bit. I'll add a little indigo blue in between. Give it the shadow. You're giving this one up front. Go back in here and add a little more of that cobalt. Brighten it up. Oh, that one over there, I didn't like that. So I'm gonna clean up my brush, go back in and take that out. You wanna do that real quick if you can. Again, with this area right here, it's kind of bleeding a little bit, so you can clean it up. I would dry it, come back, and put the color in. Okay, so I dried it, coming back, adding in the bright reds. So it's concentrated, almost it's almost kind of gouache-like. That. It's really pretty. And then you can go in and take those, take the rose color and have the little petals coming down here. And then you can go back in and add some brighter green and yellow. Just to brighten it up a little more. In here, add some yellow to brighten that up. And now that this is dry, go in again with your rose, and you can do the dabs. go pretty abstract cherry tree now we move on to the dogwood type tree before we move on to the dogwood tree I'm just going to peel up the cherry tree so you can see how cute it is That's such a cute little mini abstract okay I'll flip this around so same premise, just a little different, color-wise, whatnot. I'm going to use my Grumbacher, grab some water, halfway fill it with water. This one, I think the skies will be a little bit brighter, brighter blue, grab that cobalt, or if I wanted to grab some turquoise. Just gonna clean up this little palette here. That's how I clean up the palette. So, grab a little turquoise blue. See this over here? I can make this one just a little bit brighter than the last one in the sky. And a little cobalt together. And we're going to bleed this up top and on the bottom. And this one we're going to add clouds. Now I've shown you many times how easy clouds can be with just a paper towel. Now I'll keep adding cobalt to the top. You see that? A little more concentrated. So it's very bright. I'm going to add a little to the bottom. Down here. 
The sky looks fairly bright. We take just a small piece of paper towel, go like that, roll it up like that. The clouds. We're just pushing down and taking the paint off. And you've got your really big clouds. Look how simple that is. Down here, we're going to do green. This is a simpler, faster one. Going to wash in medium green. I'm not touching the blue part yet because I know it will bleed into it. So, going to grab some hooker's green for the bottom area. Maybe a little ultramarine mixed in here. Getting it fairly dark down here. And a little bit on the top. In this section here, you can go in and add some yellow. Put it right on top of that. Look at that. Bright. taking some of the paint away. I'm going to go back in and add some of that medium green. Let it bleed in. Still fairly not, it's not dark enough down here, so I'm going to go in. I'm adding medium green with some indigo. And it gets nice dark green. Let that bleed up a little bit. Keeping this side lighter than this side. So it's bled a little bit up here, and I've shown you before. Clean up your brush, the water, and you go in and dab that out of there. Still kind of bleeding. So I'll keep dabbing it. Make it stop. And then go back in and add my blue. Just touching it with some darker concentrated blue. That should bleed. Pushing it upwards. Okay, at this point I'm going to dry it with the hairdryer. Now that it's dry, I'm going to in, going to add the tree in it like I did the last time. Again, I'm going to use the burnt ember. Just going to go in here. I'll put my tree in. I use a Grumbacker number two brush. Just a simple squiggly line branch tree. I realized that I should have made this more blue back here because I want to put white um, gouache on there for the dogwood buds. 
So we're going to let this dry. I'm going to do a wash over it. See how this is a new technique. Okay, so I dried that. I'm going to take my brush with the cobalt and the turk mixed. I'm going to lightly wash over it. See that? Now I took away the clouds, but that's okay. I can leave some of them. I'm just washing over the edges of the tree area. It might bleed a little bit, but that's okay. There's still a cloud over there and some white spots over there. And we can go in with that brush and pick up some of that brown that's bled. But you can just go in and wash the whole thing blue. Take out the clouds over here. You don't have to worry about that issue. Okay, we're gonna dry this one now too. Okay, it's fairly dry. I'm gonna go and add some, some details down here with the grass. Mix in some medium green and some brown. Just adding in the back layer a little bit. And I wash that. I cleaned up my brush. I'm just pushing it around and putting some little layers down like this. Sit down like this. Go back and add some yellow. I'm going to take some over here and add some yellow over here. Brighten it up. I do that if I feel like it's looking too dark. I'll wipe away the paint, which I'm doing right now. You see, wiping it away. Then I'll go in and I'll add the brighter color. And I'll just put the darker color or well, the shadow area. keeping this area fairly light. Back here too. Okay, so now I have some white gouache or you could have white acrylic paint, whatever works for you, whatever you have on hand. I just have a little bit over here. The consistency should be wet but not super loose because then it'll be translucent. I'm just going to go in and give it a dab. To show the little buds. You can go in and add a tiny bit of pink to it too, so it looks like a, like a little dogwood. You know, I have the pink in the middle. But in the spring, you have those white flowering trees. Poxitani Phil said it was going to be six more weeks to spring, and I like that groundhog this year. I can put some little blooms that fell on the ground here. Because they do fall. It makes it hard. Just going like this. And then if you want to put some like concentrated little swipes of uh, grass like this in the front, even over here, 
with your brush. Tip of your brush, just little swipes of grass. You can add another color to it. You can add some pink. Rose. Add some little, oh, so that's still wet. But that's okay. Grab it a little more concentrated so it doesn't bleed as much. And make them tinier. So if they do bleed, it'll bleed into a nice little circle. There we go. More blooms and blooms over here. If it's still bleeding, you just take the brush, clean it, and grab that paint. Like I'm doing here. Go back in and add some green. Play around with it. Doesn't have to look exactly like this. I'm just giving you a little ideas. There you go. And there is the dogwood. The mini, mini, mini me dogwood. Whoops. There. So there you go. Monday Mini Madness, Spring Flowering Trees. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you so much for stopping by. Have a fabulous day.